Live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering VeeamOn 2019. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Miami, everybody. Sunny Miami, Dave Vellante here with Peter Burris. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and there's a lot of noise here, and there's a lot of signal here. Veeamon 2019, this is theCUBE's third year doing Veeam's big customer show. We started in NOLA, last year was Chicago, a very hip location here at the Fontainebleau Hotel. Kerry Stanton is here, he is the Vice President of Business Development and Corporate Dev, Corp Dev at Veeam, and Jeff Carlett, a yeah. CUBE alum, longtime friend of theCUBE, Senior Director of Strategic Alliances at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome, Kerry, let me start with you. Uh, I want everyone to talk about sports with you, but anyway, we won't. <laughs> we'll hold that up. Ruined. But uh, Monday <laughs> momentum. You know, you're relatively new to, to Veeam, um, but, you, but you've been here now a couple of years. Uh, where's this momentum coming from, from your perspective as a recent, you know, Veeam entrant? Yeah, no, the momentum's coming from across the board, but I think a big momentum is coming from new product innovation that we're doing with Office 365 and what it's driving on subscription business, momentum that we have for the, the pent-up demand we had for U4. Uh, but a big part is coming from our relationships like we have with HPE. Like we invested heavily a few years ago when we announced that joint reseller agreement. And what we've done is not just you know, continue to sell, but add a plethora of new solutions to it. Jeff's going to talk about what we're doing with GreenLake, adding SimpliVity, adding you know, the overall solutions that we have, but that's a, that's a team that started two years ago with two people that we now have over 20 people just working dedicated with HP on co-selling, and I'm happy to say that our business in first half, or I should say year to date, is up 50% year over year on a global reseller business. Well, Jeff, I mean, theCUBE, yeah. as you know, has been documenting the, the, the ebbs and flows of HP and HPE so true. Over, the, over the last, you know, better part of a decade, and when HP split in two, the HPE and, and HP Inc., uh, one of the things that, and then sold the software business, or large right. portion of the software business, one of the things that went was data protected. You got and it. that just opened up a whole new set of opportunities, and Veeam was obviously one of those, and it's starting to pay dividends. You got it, yeah, to, to that point, you know, that evolution through HP.next, we were able to focus on our core. Mm -hmm. And the benefit, the inherent benefit is that we can partner with the best of class in, in the marketplace, and Veeam is considered best of class. So when it comes to data availability, data protection, we are all in, and we're actually, as a, as, a, as, a, as a company, we're actually doubling down now in our partnership with Veeam. We've actually taken them from maybe a traditional storage alliance and taken them to be one of our top global strategic alliances in the line of the Microsofts, the VMware's, the SAP's, because we see great momentum, we see great customer adoption and interest, and we see great innovation at the product level, but also in the whole go-to-market chain. Well, talk a little bit more about that, because it was, uh, the, the move allowed you to make, form new partnerships, and it dramatically expanded your TAM, but I'm interested in the nature of, of the partnership. Is yeah. it, you know, go to just go to market? Is there, you know, engineering integration? Talk right. about that a Well, our bit. first step when, when we came together and said, okay, let's take this to the next level, is we, we realized we needed to narrow our focus to the core customer values, and we really settled on three core areas of this relationship. One is first, data protection for, uh, around our intelligent storage. As you know, our storage portfolio, 3PAR, Nimble, we've had a great relationship there. We continue to drive co-innovation at the roadmap level, but also drive go-to-market activities and marketing, and we have feet on the street you know, actively selling. So the first one's really expanding our work with storage. But now we're, we're taking it, we're extending, if you will, through consumption-based data management using what HP has GreenLake. GreenLake, we see 40% of customers by 2020 are going to be consuming their data center IT more in a consumption model. There are inherent benefits of that. Well, we now have offered and, and launched just recently uh, backup as a service through our flex capacity coming out of GreenLake, providing customers the, the choice, if you will, to move from a, not from a capital expenditure, but by the drink, if you will, a consumption base. So that's the second core area. And third core area is net new for us, and that's around our HCI portfolio. As you know, we purchased SimpliVity. Well, SimpliVity has a lot of inherent uh, backup, uh, uh, you know, a dedupe compression in line, uh, but there actually are specific use cases that we're deploying out there that show how SimpliVity in a Veeam environment can actually, customers can see actually incremental value. So those are the four, the three key areas we're focusing on as we up-level this whole relationship and partnership. So Gary, 
Yeah, please. No, I was just going to say, you know, if you think of, you, we talk a lot about, we go after the, the technical decision maker and all these you know, hundreds of people here at the conference, and then going towards the executive, the, the enterprise, and it's through the relationships with HPE on this, you know, the, the flex capacity, being able to go to a customer and offer a true enterprise solution that they're looking for, everyone wants as a service, and so we've closed multiple deals this, this year, thanks to having the green light, right? So our relationship with HP continues to elevate in the enterprise as a result of the solutions that we're doing. Not just selling storage, but selling a complete solution. Ratmeyer was kind of tongue in cheek this morning at the analyst and, and media event. He was talking about how in 2013 he predicted that Veeam would be a billion, billion dollar, dollar company by 2018 and he said he missed it by six months. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons was because you know you got the subscription model. That's that's what he so said, that's, yeah. GreenLake obviously is part of that, maybe not the predominant part yet, but, but you, uh, I think you said Jeff, 40% you know, saying it will yeah. consume by, as a service by 20, 2020. 2020, actually soon. Okay, so pretty substantial. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's driving that? Is it just CFOs? Want to go to, to, right. to OPEX or? Well, I, I think it's, uh, uh, there are many, it, the value you get without locking yourself in to every three years needing to do a total forklift upgrade of your infrastructure, that's one thing. The second thing is moving it from a capital expenditure to a, uh, uh, an OPEX expenditure. It can be planned, it can be budgeted mm. uh, as well. The, the third thing is, the customer doesn't have to mess with all the technology, updating the firmware, the drivers, and all that. We will do it on their behalf, right? We give them the, the, the economics of cloud on-prem. And that's the beauty of that. So we, we believe, and lockstep in alignment with, with Veeam, the world is hybrid in the future. So on-prem is here to live forever. But increasingly, we need to leverage the assets in the cloud, and this is providing that, 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 that the ability of doing it in a consumption and, model. And it's not just the economics, it's the experience as well. Oh, totally. If you want to, if you want to, if, you if, if you live in a house, and you're a homeowner, and you want a new bathroom, you put into the bathroom. If you're a renter, you end up in a long, laborious negotiation that you're going to lose. <laughs> uh, and the same kind of notions here, is people right. realize there's greater strategic opportunities and options from how they use their data differently. They want access to those options. I mean, that's the basis of agility. The OpEx, the OpEx to CapEx is good, but it's, you got to put it in business context. It's how you create additional options in your data-oriented yeah. investments. Yeah. So as you guys are moving yeah. forward, are you starting to have that conversation with customers and relating data, data value, asset management, backup, restore, to this broader picture, this broader strategic union yeah, you're putting yeah, together? Yeah, and that is a key imperative of how we get even stronger up to in, in traction is telling the bigger, the bigger picture. You look at the world you know, of yesterday where it's just you know, backup and recovery. Look at with the advent of uh, you know, edge devices and the amount of data that's being put, consumed put at the edge. Now look at AI and machine learning where the data is inherently needed to project the changes and the needs are in the future. So I think these all tie into the play and I believe a Green Lake or consumption model can provide uh, great benefits above and beyond just the traditional kind of yeah. backup and recovery. Yeah. And I was just going to add to it is that it also brings in our ecosystem, so the relationship, the tier one relationship we both have with a Microsoft. So when you start looking at a solution that the, the business owner wants, they want to be able to say I need cloud, I need on-prem, I need backup recovery. And so by going through Green Lake, they can encompass, you know, we have a broader ecosystem that we're able to bring in versus just single threading these discussions where you're going in and selling a data protection story and leaving, but you didn't solve that broader customer problem. Mm -hmm. And by with GreenLake, they are solving that overall problem. Yeah. I always like to say nothing really happens until you make a sale. You, got, you talked about some of the growth earlier. So, so why, but why Veeam? I mean obviously you're yeah. getting some traction in the market, but there's a lot of players out there that there you is. could partner with, and you do partner with others, but why Veeam? What there makes is. Veeam so special? Well, I think one, inherently we are lockstep in agreement of the overarching strategy. We talked about hybrid, we talked about portfolio. Uh, two is, we've got the engagement at all levels of our organization, which all stems truly from having a unified roadmap. Okay, innovation has to happen at the roadmap level and you need to be lockstep aligned through the value chain in the way you take it to market, the way you align your sellers, the way you deliver a value proposition that truly is valuable to our customers. It's proven from our IDC research that customers that are deploying and purchasing HP and Beam solutions are seeing a you know, 250 plus percent ROI on that investment. So there's just huge customer benefit and why not go bigger and go bigger and go bigger with them? 
Same question to you, Kerry. So, sure. so why HPE, How, why is HPE so special uh, as a partner? So I think HPE, for, first and foremost, being that first partner that came to us to want to go all in, as, as Jeff was talking about, from day one, and top down, right? So what, we're not just working with the department of HPE, we have it from Antonio, from Jim Jackson, down the, down the stack in the organization. We're aligned from day one. They lead with data protection. It's no longer maybe just a nice to have, it's an, a requirement in every one of their sales processes where they're leading partner that they have on data protection. And so, and what we've been able to do and have that enterprise visibility by them assisting us on our journey. So from across the board, whether it's mm -hmm. through management, through technology, or just in true go to market, they're by far the, our number one partner that we have on our sell with motion. So Jeff, I want to talk to you a little bit about GreenLake, and Carrie, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as okay. well. Uh, one of the challenges that going to this consumption-based model for a company that's traditionally sold products, you know, as part of this overall move in all industries, all sectors, from a product to a services orientation, is how do you introduce metrics that are associated with the service, because it used to be you just sold the product. And the metrics for storage are different from the metrics from backup, different from the metrics from compute. So as you've gone to GreenLake, what kind of because I love GreenLake. Yeah. What kind of specialized or specific types of things, how are you selling it to try to tie that service into the business outcomes that your customers are trying to yeah, see? Yeah, well, well clearly, it's my belief, some of our first wins and early wins, we were able to monitor and metric the value the customers were getting, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the service levels they've received, and so we have a number of different uh, uh, methods of capturing the data and the empirical data on the service levels and uh, being able to use that to then use that in the selling motion to be able to articulate the experience and the expectations that come with that. What are some of the harder problems that your customers are asking you guys to, to solve and, and how are you approaching it together? Well, I, I think that what we're talking about here at GreenLake is a real hard problem to solve, right? A consumption base across, you know, across geographic regions, across different uh, technologies, on-prem, off-prem, hybrid, and we don't have another partner that we can go to market with when we hear this from the customer. So when we hear it, we know that we can lean in and we truly are, you know, to follow on from your question, is the, the, the fact is that HPE is solving all this and then bringing us in as their number one partner, right, is, is, the, is the differentiator that we love. So solving those problems at, a, at an enterprise level and at a commercial level and doing it with one partner is, is easy, right? We're shortening the sales cycle, increasing the value to the customer. Yeah, one thing I'd say is, and it's always, uh, complexity is always a problem and an issue, right? So that, it will always be a problem and an issue and we will always be striving to improve and improve the complexity. Well you know, you know the Veeam, Veeam works super simple, right? And we, especially when you look in our HCI portfolio, and that's all about driving simplicity, if you will, and the way you can deploy IT, you can scale it. Uh, so I think complexity is, and will always be a problem, but it's, it's a given too. It'll always be there and we'll always be striving to make it even easier and easier and easier for our joint customers. But one of the challenges that you face, especially as you go to a services oriented model, is how do you put a price on the outcomes that you're delivering as opposed to the price on the assets that the person's taking. So I think one of the biggest challenges, and it sounds like you guys are pretty close to you know, yeah. you know, getting this together, but it's part of a broader portfolio, is where does this, let's put it slightly differently, We've talked about this before in some of the other interviews. Backup has moved from a have to have it for maybe compliance or it just makes good sense to have it to a strategic business capability for a company that's increasingly differentiating itself on its data assets. Yeah. That moves this conversation about a, as a service into a different group and a different, uh, and, and a different, uh, a different level. And that's what I'm wondering, is those, those those metrics have got to be in, uh, a, a big part of the conversation yeah. because the entire organization is now recognizing backup as more than just a bolt-on. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, one example, one of our close partners, and actually we're here uh, with them, Island. So disaster recovery is a service, right? They standardize on Nimble and Veeam, and uh, together, you know, that combination to them was good enough to build their business on, right? So there's inherent value, and uh, uh, we expect to continue to, to, to grow and be able to expose that value, because we believe more and more customers, not your, just your pure enterprises, but from your mid-market all the way up, can be able to utilize and, 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 and 
see that value and experience it. Just a point of clarification, if I could, on the HCI piece, yeah. uh, specifically around SimpliVity. So SimpliVity is, was known for sure. backup use cases. Still is. Uh, so where does Veeam and SimpliVity fit versus sort of SimpliVity? Yeah, Solo. yeah. Well, first and foremost, yes. Uh, you know, SimpliVity has inherent great uh, um, data availability features inherent in it. That's core to it. But in reality, uh, for customers, let's say a mixed environment, uh, you know, whether it be virtualized, non-virtualized, there are inherent benefits to having Veeam uh, uh, in addition to SimpliVity. Uh, another example would be um, customers that want to really have the access to be able to do specific file restores. So we see capabilities in, in running uh, Veeam in parallel with with SimpliVity. Actually, I see a lot of customers that are, that are deploying SimpliVity are also deploying Veeam, and they're, 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 it's, it's an additive value that they're seeing, and they're able to parse out features and uh, functionality and be able to increase their level of value that couldn't be done just purely from a SimpliVity standpoint alone. All right, Kerry, we'll give you the final word. <laughs> the final word is, uh, bumper sticker on uh, <laughs> Veeam sticker, Veeam on. <laughs> I, I would say that you know, what we're doing here with, uh, with HPE is you know, kind of, we would say we're in the first inning. What, we, what we're seeing on the innovations that we have coming out later this year with HPE uh, coming into, into next year and that we're just thrilled to be uh, having them as a platinum sponsor of Veeam on and look forward to another successful year. Awesome, guys, thanks so much for coming on. I, I got to ask you, Boston-based person, Bruins fan? Bruins, yes. You worried about Tuca at all, a 12-day no. layoff? No. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. Chara is going to be nice and rested, and uh, Chara, more Chara or less Chara? I'm going to, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to take more. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. We'll oh. see. We'll see. <laughs> Go Bruins. All right, guys. Thanks so much for coming on. And thank you for watching. Keep it right there. We'll be back with our next guest shortly. Right after this break, you're watching the Cube from Vmon 2019 from Miami. Be right back.